Kind of a friendly little bugger. All right guys, Papa Pepper back again with the Abundant Harvest Homestead. I'm gonna start off by asking you guys a question. You ever have people tell you, don't do it, you don't wanna do it, it's not gonna work out well, you're gonna regret it, whatever you do, don't do it. And then you go ahead and do it anyway. Now, I know we all like to think we're the exception to the rule, that even if it works out poorly for others, you know, we'll get it right. We'll be the ones to pull it off. And um, I just wanna say I did it. And I think they were right. It doesn't look like it worked out well. I thought we did a good job, but when I look at the evidence, it seems contrary to that. I'll show you what I'm talking about. Anyone got a guess? Yeah, they say, don't plant sunchokes in your garden. They'll take over. They'll be invasive. And I'm thinking like, well, I got a nice fenced in area here, a nice little rock raised bed. I should be able to control them. And then this year, look, they're outside the garden here ton of them coming up outside here in my walkway, there, coming around here. Oh look, there's a bunch more. All those should be in there, yet they're out here. Moving forward, sneaking out this corner, more over here, more over here. I mean, they're, they're all over the place outside here. So how did it happen? What have I learned? Well. When they grow, they grow from a tuber. In fact, I'll pull one up to show you guys what I'm talking about. Nicely, I, uh, there we go, planted mulch. Okay, so this ball in the center here is gonna go ahead and be the tuber. That tuber is what they're gonna grow from this year, and then they're gonna shoot out these long, here, I'll use this as an example. Okay, they'll have their original tuber, and they'll shoot out a long line, and then they'll make another tuber. And they'll shoot out another long line in some other direction and make another tuber over and over and over again. So from the ones I planted in here, they shot little long tubers out into the mulch pathways. And we tried really hard to dig them all up last year, but you gotta remember, you're kind of following some tiny little thread that can break out into the middle of who knows where, and then encountering another one. So we didn't track them all down to their end. So since I see where they're coming up, my goal is to dig them all up from the walkway, dig them all up, and then I'm just gonna actually maybe take a spot, yeah, somewhere, out over there, back over here, somewhere, and I'm just gonna plant them on top of the ground, kind of like a Ruth Stout tomato type thing, put them on top of the ground and then just mulch them. And I think, I think it should work. I'll push these back into here, take the other ones, just let them run on top the surface of the ground, under the mulch, I can dig them back at the end of the harvest time and should be able to find them all easier is my goal. So I'm gonna dig these up and see if I can't figure it out. Wow, okay, I'll be the first to say it. Did we learn anything today? I don't know how we missed this one. I mean, this is a big, long section of tuber, all heading out. Check out that guy, that was just a tiny, that's not the right one. There was one that was just a tiny little ball at the end that we missed, but supposedly, you know, any of this twisty, turny stuff, if that gets left somewhere, oh, it'll grow a new one. So there's a reason that people say, 
don't plant Jerusalem artichokes or don't plant sunchokes in your garden. Um, on the bright side, you need usually, I think, more than one variety in order to have them produce viable seeds. I just cut off the tops and the flower heads, feed them my sheep and goats just to make sure. But they produced a wonderful crop. We definitely like eating them. And now I've pretty much got, I mean, a five gallon bucket <laughs> full of extra that I'll be putting in a different location. But look at this once. Okay. Yeah, see that? We pretty much tore up everything. I mean, this is my walkway here. It's just all tore up. So on the bright side, I actually got a full load of mulch on the trailer. I'm gonna scoop up some of the stuff because it's got a lot of dirt mixed in to add to some of my raised beds. A lot of it's actually some pretty nice soil at this point. It's between the decomposed wood chips and the soil from the bottom that got mixed into it. It'll be a good filler for some of my raised beds. And then I'll just add a new layer of mulch around and replace the rocks I took out. Plus, look at these guys. Oh yeah, see that? Found a couple big old pieces of duck food. Let's feed these to the ducks, get some empty buckets, and restore this, and then make our new one. Quack, 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 quack. Yeah, ducks. I got a present. Who wants them? Who wants them? Huh? Who wants them? You ducks are not playing along very well here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on. Come on, ducks. Here's another one. Ready? There we go. Come and get it, girl. Yep, there's one. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, grubbing it. Every day I'm grubbing it. Hey, oh, you got two in a row. There's one more up here somewhere. Come check it out or we'll have to find some nice big beetles for a photo shoot later in the air. Yeah, you guys are doing okay. And they actually got some eggs going. Should get some more Muscovies soon. That'll be good. So this spot you see behind me is where I'm actually going to make this little experiment. The reason is it's one of the easiest areas of my property to clear. Still take a lot of work, but here we go. Much, much later that day. I, uh, battery was getting low on the camera anyway, and I knew I'd have to edit it. It was too painful to do. I didn't want to have to watch it all, so I just cut it there. But here's the plan. I'm just gonna dump this bucket of stuff out, kind of spread around. I'm not gonna plant it all that nice. Why? Because I believe in the plant. I think the plant's going to, uh, do a good job on its own. And also, you may see I removed a lot of stuff there. I mean, compared to the area on this side of it and the area on that side of it, it's barren right now. You may think, well, that seems like a lot of effort. Well, it is, but remember, I'm planting like an invasive spoo food source, uh, these sunchokes, that might take over anyway. So I'm gonna have enough to deal with if this doesn't go right to begin with. And then you may be wondering, what in the world do I do with all that stuff I scrape up? I'll show you that. Everything around here has a purpose. I just gotta relocate it. So here, <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, 10, 11, 12. I guess I got 12 buckets full of that compost. And uh, the cool thing about that is it's all just gonna get added to this hoogle mound. Yeah, let's do that quick. So this hoogle mound uh, is just gonna be a big compost pile anyway. And all this buried wood is going to decompose and feed plants for generations to come. So I'll be adding more layers of wood to this and make it a bit bigger. It's coming out this way a bit still. Not really worried about the weeds 
because I think they'll get heat up and killed maybe. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. I understand that a lot of my life may look like a lot of hard work, and it is. But I once heard that if you don't want a hard life, work hard. And uh, maybe I took that a little bit too seriously, but it gives me a chance to stay fit, exert some real energy, time to think, okay? I'm not just going through these routines, I'm contemplating and thinking the whole time too, which I think is very important. So let's move on to the project. So I've got my five gallon bucket full of these extra sun chokes. And I mean, some of those are big, hearty sun chokes. We could have ate those. But I also got a small bag of uh, Clemson spineless okra. Some of the ones I got from Vegetable Man. And uh, I'm gonna put these in the middle, put those around the outside, just cover them with mulch, see how they do. I don't think I'm moving the problem to a different part of my property. I think these are not really gonna be penetrating that. I think they're just gonna be spreading out underneath the mulch. I could be wrong. These may be like the new goats, as far as something a lot of homesteaders have, but they struggle with and they have a hard time with and they fight with. I don't know. We'll find out though. Now comes the worst part of the job, cleaning up my mess. So, looks like we're cleaned up. Looks pretty good, I don't know guys. By moving those, did I do a good job? Is it a good experiment or am I just an idiot? And I know that some of you guys tell me I'm an idiot without me even asking. So I'm not sure what to do about you because it's like you're practicing for the test when nobody else knows there's gonna be a test and you, I don't know, I guess you're kinda like the teacher's pet type people. Um, but yeah, let me know what you think. I'll show you this quick and I think we're back where we need to be. We'll see what happens. So, no worse for wear. They're back on the inside for the moment. Much like goats, I think they'll be escaping their fence again soon enough and I'll pull those sticks out of there now. They were just to keep the uh, straw, the mulch on for the winter. But we're back up and running. All right, guys, pop out. As always, I'm Papa Pepper, and I'd like to remind you, don't post for free. If you'd like to be part of a revolution in social media, an economic power to the people, where users can actually blog for cryptocurrency, then I'd recommend that you check out steamit.com and join the revolution. Pop out.